Uh, on the Getting Over podcast, uh, the the two podcasters, Adam Silverstein and uh, Chris Vanini. Chris Vanini is a, a writer for The Athletic. He writes about college football. Uh, I, I read Chris a lot. and I, I've i interviewed him for uh, a podcast on this website as well. They had Brian Danielson on their podcast, and they asked him about G1. And Danielson said, sometimes I have delusions of going to G1. But I think that's what they are. I think they're delusions. That's something that I've wanted to do forever and ever and ever. And I've never been able to do it. And so this year would be the year to do it. Except is it? Because by the time the next G1 rolls around, I'll be 43. And he mentioned that it would be a little irresponsible of him. I. It's interesting. I never... You know, it's funny because, um, you know, when the decision was being made by Brian on whether it's wwe or or AEW, and doing g1 was absolutely part of the decision i think he he would watch g1 and want to be involved and i know even recently you know he's talked about you know him and moxley and maybe samoa joe or claudio or some guys just going over you know together as a group in g1 and and having these unbelievable matches you know for a month um you know but i never okay Two and a half years ago, or you know, I did think that he probably really wanted to do a G one, okay, but things have changed, you know, as as they always do, and my thought was that that he would, like, I didn't think he would do a G one, and the reason, well, I mean, there's two 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 things. Number one, he's getting hurt in 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 matches, so I mean, that, and that's the the main thing he's kind of talked about is like the irresponsible aspect of it. But the one that I thought why he would never do a G1 was because having two kids and being gone a month and then being young, I didn't think he would want to go away for a month. As much as he would want to do G1 to fulfill one of his wrestling dreams, I don't think at that age with his kids, I didn't think he wanted to be gone for a month. Now, yes, could you bring the kids to Japan? You know, like if you're there for like a week, you can do that. But for a month, that's asking a lot. It really is. So I, that's why I didn't think that he would end up ever, you know, doing it in the last, you know, year or two. Mm -hmm. um, but with the injuries that he suffered, you know, it makes it more, um, you know, like you said, like a responsibility part. You know, it's like it's it's like, look, look, look I believe that that I mean, he loves wrestling and I think he wants to do wrestling forever and probably will in some form. But. I also think that, you know, I mean, I just remember talking to him, um, you know, during the period he was out and even the period when he was back. And I mean, one of the things that he has said to me, and I'm sure he said it to other people too, is that if he believed, and this was just on the concussion issue, if he believed that something that he does now will affect him very negatively later in life, it would be completely irresponsible to do it. Now, he didn't believe that that, was necessarily the case we all know it possibly could be the case mm -hmm. we all know that and, and not just with him but with everyone in wrestling that's had concussions we all know that we all know that with, if you're an nfl player if you're a hockey player we know that there is that possibility okay but but you don't quit the sport over it necessarily although if you have too many it probably is advisable at some point to quit and and, and all that so um but with brian it's like you know it's like he did get a concussion last year. I don't know what happened with the Max thing. He broke his arm, you know, with Okada. Um, he's got to be judicious as far as, you know, what he's doing. He knows that. Um, and also wants to have great matches. Um, like he probably will have on Sunday. Although he's worth, I think he's with a very, um, he's with an opponent that I, I'd like to believe that they could do an incredible match and an incredible match relatively safe. But we'll find out. Um, but yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't, you know, it's like, yeah, he's, he talked about it. I think, is, does he have dreams about it? Yes. Did I think he would do it at this stage? No, no. And especially with the, um, you know, there's two injuries in a row. It's kind of like you got to do, you know, if he was in G1, it'd probably be seven to nine singles matches in, in a month. And, you know, like when he was younger, would he do it? Of course. Um, now, um, it's. You know, and, and would Tony want him to do, you know, Tony wouldn't want him doing it. I mean, at all. You, you're going to want to risk, you know, one of your top guys 
on on that. I mean, it's one thing when it's Eddie and not 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 downgrading Eddie. It's Eddie's dream. Eddie wanted to go. Um, you know, and Tony had plans for Eddie. Tony let him go because it was his dream, which is very nice of Tony to do that for his talent. Um, you know, and Eddie, you know, obviously got banged up, but he's he's still out there. And but it's but it's a risk, but it also took Eddie off off the grid for a month. Um, Brian is used in a much higher level than Eddie, and Brian's very, very valuable to them right now on television. You know, maybe I don't know how to say they're I don't know who who would you say is their number one star right now? I mean, it's you know, you know, punk's gone. You know, punk mm-hmm. was um, I guess Max. I, I guess if I would say one number one is Max, but maybe two is Brian, maybe, you know, at this point. Mo- Moxley or or Brian. Moxley and Brian. Yeah, yeah. And then probably Omega from there. Um I mean, it should be. I, I feel like Omega should be one or two, but for whatever reason, he's he he's not. But yeah, Brian. Uh, well, Brian Omega, 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 right after Omega, Omega, Omega's like Danielson or more in the sense that you've got to be very judicious in how you use him now. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like he can go out there. They both can go out there and tear the house down and give you the greatest matches in the world. But, you know, they they they, they can't do it every week anymore. You know, and it's just one of those things that you have to be aware of, whereas some of the other guys like Adam Page probably can. They got to, you know, Adam Page is the guy that they got to get up. It's going to soon interesting because, you know, the Adam Page Strickland match to me is very interesting because Strickland might get cheered a lot in Seattle. And Adam Page is the baby face. And, um, you know, I just can wait until Monday and everyone's going, ah, nobody likes Adam Page anymore. <laughs> well, he is, he's he's the baby meal. face with a dark cloud over his head, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the cloud's gone, you know, now it's time to, uh, you know, start talking, start, uh, start being a top guy again. You know, by the way, that, that promo, I was reading an old observer. I talked to John about this last night. So this time frame is, uh, fall brawl, 96 war games. And at the time WWE was doing an angle with the fake razor and the fake diesel. Mm-hmm. And you were and what, you what, were, what, what, what a horrible angle that was. <laughs> you were writing that these companies are far too concerned with faking people out than actually growing the the audience. Yes. And I, when I was watching well, back, that, back, back, back then with WCW for sure, because they were they, you know their big mentality was is like swerve the smart fans, and it's like. You know, there are ways to swear of the smart fans that are judicious for business, but to do it for the sake of doing it, you're, if your goal is to swerve the smart fans or swerve the fans, period, over and over and over again, look, I could book to surprise people every single week by doing something stupid that makes no sense. That's the key. It would have to be stupid and makes no sense because I'm doing stuff that makes sense. It's people are going to be able to figure it out because it's making sense. Now, occasionally you do got to throw curveballs yeah. to, to keep people honest. You know, of course, but if your obsession is just to fool people and that's your obsession, uh, you will be a terrible booker in the long run. Yes, for sure. So, you know, and, and, you know, I mean, so, so it's, it's a judicious process. And I didn't find hangman's promo to be that at all. What I found it to be is he was speaking in a way that I was not sure how many people really understood what he was talking about because his character on the television show from all of 2023 that we've seen is the same. We didn't see the, we didn't see, uh, but I didn't necessarily see the dark cloud and, and the sadness guy, but he wasn't, um, he wasn't out there. You know what I mean? I mean, he wasn't out there doing media. He wasn't out there at all. He wasn't doing lots of promos. Um, yeah, he did. And he brought up, yeah, he had the great match with Moxley. I, I just, I just wondered like, was the audience owed an explanation of what he was actually talking about and how many, well, what what percentage of the audience do you think actually knew that that was a CM Punk reference? Mm, I don't know, five, ten. That's a hard one to say. Um, but I think that when you do that stuff, I mean, he was doing it in 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 trying to do a storyline with Swerve, where the honest thing is part of. I mean, it was very much a storyline thing of, hey, you have this spot, but you haven't really been gung-ho about it and this is the explanation is like yeah you you know what it's like he went out there and it's like yeah you're right but it's the new adam page now i thought it was more that this is the new you know for the average person watching it's like 
the new Adam Page is starting now. I had a bunch of things, and people could think, "Oh, is there a personal life issue?" Yeah, oh, that, there... that that I mean, you you can speculate a, a bunch of yeah. things if you don't know what the real story is. But but he laid it out and 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 said it. But the whole thing is, it's it's like, I think that for him, the key was is that he was a top guy. He's still kind of a top guy, but he hasn't been used that much as a top guy. And it's like, hey, there's, I've got, you know, the idea with him is, is fresh coat of paint. And I think sure. that's what, when I was watching it, that was my thing as, as, you know, with, with the, the, the thing there was, it's attempt to tell people that it's like, we have a fresh coat of paint with him right now, but to make that one work, um, he has to beat Swerve. Yeah. And, and he's got to be groomed for max i mean that's what the top spot is or um or maybe go after ray phoenix you know what i mean like because that international belt has has grown greatly in prestige thanks to orange cassidy and and you know and and and, and hold that and be a focal point and and um you know because if you go in there and you say like i had this dark cloud and now it's lifted i'm going to do something and then you don't do anything well, that doesn't really um that doesn't do anyone any favors um at that point you know again just depends on like, like everything in 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 wrestling it's it's about the follow-up and um sometimes you have it and sometimes you don't um yeah hey if you love this clip have i got a deal for you wrestlingobserver.com do you have a commute do you work out at the gym do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.